Hey everyone, Nick Gerbert is here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to be looking at how to do sensitivity analysis in Excel. This is part of our lecture segment on exploring the parameter space with sensitivity analysis. So in the last segment, we went through all the theory behind sensitivity analysis and everything that's involved and kind of a simple example on how to do that. Now let's look at how we actually operationalize that in Excel. So Excel has a nice built-in tool called a data table, which makes this process fairly easy for us. So a data table lets you look at the value of some cell while changing some different cells. And so you can look at the value of an output of your model while changing around the inputs of your model without you having to go in and manually change those out. And with data tables, we have two different ways we can go about it. One is a one-way data table and the other is a two-way data table. So with a two-way data table, we're looking at two different inputs at once and changing each of these two inputs and kind of the intersection of all those different uh, outputs or runs of the model which produce those outputs and with the one-way data table we're looking only at a single input at once and um, that is sort of a limitation in excel that you basically can only really look at two variables at the same time in the analysis uh, but it gets difficult to visualize more than two variables at once anyway. So it's not a huge limitation, even though uh, it can be frustrating if you want to look at more variables, you find yourself doing a lot of manual steps. There is a way to, to hack it into doing more than two variables at once. If basically one of your variables was something like an identifier to uh, do a view lookup on another table which has the real inputs, you could set up something like that, um, but that's a lot of effort. And uh, generally you're just gonna be looking at two variables at once as a maximum in Excel. And you access this from the data tab and then what if analysis and then data table. And then it asks for two inputs. You're gonna give it the row input cell. That's any inputs you have going horizontally in a row and a column input cell, that's any inputs you have going vertically down in a column. And if it's a one-way data table, you're only gonna have one of the two filled in. If it's a two-way data table, you're gonna have both filled in. And we'll see that uh, more precisely in an example here in a minute. And then thinking about how we can visualize the results. So there's two main ways in general to visualize sensitivity analysis. And that's true for Excel as well, is that two approaches are graphing and conditional formatting. So uh, my rule of thumb is if it's a one-way data table, you're looking at one variable at once, a graph is gonna be more effective. And if you're looking at two variables at once, a two-way data table, then conditional formatting is gonna be the more effective approach. That's not to say that you couldn't use conditional formatting with a one-way and you couldn't do a graph of a two-way, but generally I think it makes the most sense to do it that way. So here's an example of conditional formatting. Conditional formatting is just applying formatting to cells based on some conditions. And what we're gonna look at in this context is giving colors to higher and lower values. So you can see in this table, that the high values are red and the low values are green and that makes it very easy to just quickly look at this and understand where the higher and lower parts of this table are and that's going to be really useful for understanding the results of our sensitivity analysis so let's go ahead and work on an example so i'll be starting from the existing dynamic salary retirement model and now I'm going to be adding sensitivity analysis to it. So, uh, and you can find the completed example of this on the course site, which has everything in there already. So 
So let's first say, what if the savings rate was different? It's 25%. Of course, we can go in and we can change it and we can see the result of that. Um, but we want to have the values across a bunch of different values of saving rates. We want to see all the years for retirement all at once in the model without having to go in and change the input values. So we can do that with a data table. So the first thing that we'll do to build out the data table is first you want to reference whatever cell it is that has the output that you're trying to look at. You can only look at one output at once in a data table. And so you may have to have multiple if you have multiple outputs from your model. Here, we just have years to retirement as our output from the model. So I'm going to reference that over to this cell. Then um, we want to put the values of the inputs that we want to look at. So that's the, the step one in the formal sensitivity analysis process, thinking about all the different values of the inputs we want to look at. So for savings rate, let's say let's start it at 5% and go up to 70% in 5% increments. So in Excel, once you type out uh, two numbers, they can deduce the pattern from that and keep increasing it from there. So if you drag it, then we'll continue to get 5% increments after that. So now we have the setup to be able to create the data table. Um, and this is a one-way data table because we're looking at only one input at once. And so we highlight the entire range here. You wanna make sure that you get the output cell as well as all of the inputs. And you want to make sure that your output is to the right of all your um, inputs, assuming you're doing a vertical one-way data table. And so we highlight all this, and then we can go to the data tab, and then to what if analysis, and then to data table. And that's when it pops up, this thing, which asks about the row input cell and the column input cell. And for the one-way data table, we're only going to fill in one of those. So our inputs are arranged in a column, and so we're going to use the column input cell. And the cell that we want to target is the cell which contains the value of the input that we're trying to change. Here we're talking about the savings rate, and so I'm going to reference the savings rate for the column input cell. And that's it. Then once I hit OK, We've got our results here. So if you were able to save 70% every year, your years to retirement would drop from the baseline 28 down to 17 years. So that's a huge difference. And then if you were able to save less, um, it's going to take substantially longer to retire as well. Um, so then we would want to label this savings rate. So it's clear what we're actually changing here. Um, and we can uh, put a uh, merge cell here, uh, years to retirement versus uh, savings rate, uh, and wrap the text on that. So now we've got a nice table. Um, and you would want to, you know, apply some coloring to this and put nice borders around it and everything. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. You can look at the completed example for the full formatting on it. Uh, but one other thing I do want to mention, which is helpful for these data tables, is we do have to have this reference cell here, but there's no actual uh, calculation going here. This is the baseline result. So it's helpful to hide this because it's just kind of distracting. And so I usually just go ahead and make the text for that white so that it hides that cell even though it has to be there. And now we just see each of the values with uh, the input. So then to visualize this, I mentioned that graphs make a lot of sense for one-way data tables. So let's go ahead and insert and go to recommended charts and we can pick an appropriate chart type for this. Um, and this is going to be the years to retirement versus the savings rate. Uh, we would want to add 
access titles. This is the savings rate. This is the years for retirement. And then it's very easy to see that, um, of course, as we save more, we're able to retire quicker. But also you can see that the initial changes in the savings rate have a greater impact than the later changes in the savings rate. It looks sort of exponential here. And then as you get further out, it looks more linear. Um, and so going from a 10% to a 20% savings rate is a much bigger impact than going from a 60% savings rate to a 70% savings rate. And it's not very clear just looking at the numbers to draw that conclusion, but looking at the graph, it becomes very clear. Another thing which you might have noticed already, but becomes even more clear in the graph is that it caps out at 40 and that seems incorrect. Um, why is there no difference between five and 10% savings rate? It seems like it should keep going up and it should. Uh, the issue is that our model is actually capped at 40 years. And so it's maxed out the model here. And so if you did really need to evaluate five and 10% savings rate, you would then want to expand out the model. So, um, since Debbie analysis is really helpful for kind of stressing your model at the far ends and seeing if it can handle the inputs that you're throwing at it. So that's the one way data table. Now let's look at a two way data table. So let's keep working with the savings rate, but now let's also change the, uh, how often we're getting the promotions in the same analysis. So we can take the same savings rates. Uh, those were fine savings rates to use. And now we want to also line up the values that we want to look at for how often the promotions occur. So uh, we can just go up one by one and you can drag those to go all the way. Uh, let's go out to every 10 years. And now you can see kind of a table starting to form here. And whereas with the one-way data table, we put the uh, output we want to look at referenced to uh, up and to the right of our first input here, the output is going to go right here. It's going to go in this empty cell in between our column and our row input. Here, we're going to reference the year's retirement. So then now we have the setup to where we can create the two-way data table. So if I highlight this entire range, now I can go again to data, what if analysis, data table. And now that it's a two-way data table, I'm gonna fill in both of these. And so the, the numbers, the input, which is going in a row is the promotions every N years. And then the input that's going in the column is the savings rate. And then when I hit okay, it will calculate the model a whole bunch of times for us. So now we've got um, 14 times nine uh, different runs of the model um, all together without having to go and manually change out those inputs. But you just look at this thing, you know, you can kind of see looking at it for a while. Okay, lower values are over here, higher values are over here, but it's not so easy to just immediately get meaning out of that. So the next step is then to add the conditional formatting. So for conditional formatting, it's on the home tab right here, conditional formatting. And there are a lot of things you can do with it, but here we're just going to focus on the color scales and you can hover over the color scales to see what it's going to look like. And I like to use the red and green, uh, color scales because people just intuitively associate green with good and red with bad if they're put together. And so it makes a lot of sense, whatever is, uh, whatever direction, uh, higher or lower is good in your model, you would make that green and, uh, vice versa for red. So here, uh, looking at this first one, it's actually highlighting the higher years to retirement in green but a low number of years until retirement is a good thing. And so we wanna to go to this second color map and then we have the uh, 
high years to retirement highlighted in red and the low years to retirement highlighted in green. So then we can see now at a very easy glance uh, where the low and high years to retirement are um, and that um, if you, uh, and we also see again this issue of it, it kind of maxing out the model in all these five and 10% cases. Um, so then you would want to add a little bit more formatting to this. So you would want to put labels, promotions, every number of years. Um, and we can then merge that. Um, and we would want to um, merge over here as well. And this can be the savings rate. And to get that going vertically, we can go into format cells, change the alignment to 90 degrees, um, and then center that. Um, and let's uh, put that there. And we can bold these things. Um, and then, you know, you would want to uh, throw your title up here. Uh, so this is going to be the year's retirement or savings rate versus promotions every number of years. Um, and then we have our data table. Um, so, and then just like with the one-way data table, uh, I like to hide this cell because it's not anything meaningful for us. So I just make that white and then we're left with just what we actually want to see. Um, and again, you would want to apply some coloring to the rest of this um, to make it kind of stand out as a table. And you can see the full formatting of that in the completed Excel example. Uh, but that's that's the idea here of how to do a one-way data table with visualization and a two-way data table with visualization in Excel. And the lab exercise for this portion of the lecture is then to do this for your own Project 1 model. Um, so take your Excel model from Project 1 and you're going to... Um, probably make a copy of it just in case something you mess up something. Uh, but then you're going to implement a similar kind of analysis to what I just did. So you're going to add uh, one way um, data table as well as a two way data table, looking at how the MPV changes in response to changing the number of machines and the initial demand. So one-way data table for each of those, as well as a graph for each of those, and then a two-way data table with conditional formatting, looking at both at the same time. So that's sensitivity analysis in Excel. Next time, we're going to come back and cover some extra Python basics before we can get into doing sensitivity analysis in Python. So thanks for listening, and see you next time.